without further ado, I would like to give you Wyndham County's own Governor of the State of Vermont, Peter Schumann. I can't tell you how extraordinarily proud I am of this community. Everyone assembled here, those who couldn't fit in. This is our moment and you made it happen. And so many people came together after the fire, and let's not forget it was also after the floods, and only in Wyndham County in Brattleboro would we take on the impossible and make the dream happen. And that's what this is all about today. That's this celebration. There are so many people that I wish could be here right now. But I remember when I was starting a business in Wyndham County or coming into business to help my parents out, working closely with Ed and Bobby Richards. What they would do to see their grandsons here making this happen. When you think about all the folks who have given so much to this town, and we literally saw it go up in smoke, and a lot of people, including me, said, if we can't get this one right, we will forever set one of the most beautiful downtowns in America back on its heels. It was that big. It was that serious. The obstacles were tremendous. And everybody came together and said, we will not take no for an answer. We'll use our imagination. We'll do things that have never been done before. I'll never forget my first call to the chancellor of the state colleges saying, let's move it all downtown. He said, we're pretty happy where we are, you know. <laughs> I got a call from the Richard's team one day, they said, banks are saying no. I said, well, we gotta find someone who'll say yes. And uh, I can't tell you how grateful I am to Mascoma and Department of Savings and Loan for coming up when other banks would not, when they said no way. But it's really about all of us, the hundreds and hundreds of folks, the folks who saw their parents run a bookstore at the bookseller, way out in Colorado, said, we want to be a part of this dream. The state colleges who said, the, we've always needed a vibrant educational institution of higher education downtown, lifting up mostly first generation students who want to get a, get a good start, who want to have a bright future. It's about retailers saying, we're in. It's about residents across Wyndham County who said, yeah, I'll sign up. I'll sign the bottom line, even though it's nothing but a burnout hole. I will own a beautiful apartment, and I'll take your word for it that it will work, and it has. It's really a remarkable story. And this is what happens when government and the private sector and local grassroots communities team up and say, Together, yes we can, yes we will, and nothing will stop us. That's what today's about. So I just want to keep it short, but I just want to say, there are so many people to thank that we're not going to get any individuals because we'd be here too long. But really, this is not just about improving the quality of life, ensuring that we're doing different things than the rest of America. Instead of saying, we will let our downtowns decay and we'll build outside on the cornfields, we're saying, here in Brattleboro and in Wyndham County, we're gonna live, we're gonna work, we're gonna learn, we're gonna play, we're gonna have sense of community, we're gonna take care of each other in our downtown, and the Brooks House will forever be the rock, the center of that bond, those values, and that dream. Thank you so much. I'd love to introduce those to you, Joyce.
Rose Beauty. So thank you. And uh, I did start at Community College of Vermont when I was 12. So, you know, I may have been here for 30 years, but I am, you know, I started early. So, wow, what a spectacular building. It's hard to imagine that just less than two months ago, we moved our facility from Landmark Hill to downtown Brattleboro. And then less than a month ago, we welcomed 250 students and 30 faculty here um, in this facility. And today we welcome you, the Brattleboro community, come and help us celebrate um, this wonderful, wonderful building. I have to start by just saying the idea for this building came from one particular individual. And that's, I would like to thank Martha O'Connor. Many of you know. <laughs> many of you know Martha as a longtime Brattleboro resident. But I know her as the, um, she's a member of the Ron State College's Board of Trustees. And we are very fortunate now to have her as our chair of the board. And it is Martha's idea, her persistence, if you've ever worked with Martha, you know when she gets an idea, she is determined to make it happen. And I am grateful to Martha. The idea also became a reality with the support of the Vermont State College's Board of Trustees, and some of them are here today, and I hope if you, if you meet them, you'll thank them. And also, even equally important, we had terrific support from Governor Shumlin. This is the first time the Community College of Vermont has ever had state support for, to do for a building project. So thank you very much, Governor. I also want to thank the CCV and Vermont Technical College staff members who worked incredibly hard to get us here and to start and open our classes on time. That was no small feat. But I have to give a special shout out to Tap Barnhill. Tap, if you're in here, would you raise your hand? If you ever want to do a building project or want to do a move, TAP's the person you want leading the charge. So thank you, TAP. I couldn't be more thrilled with being in this facility downtown and joining partnership with Vermont Technical College and President Dan Smith. Vermont Tech and CCV have had a history of working together. Several years ago, we created what we called the Hardness Library. It is now a nationally recognized library service, library system, that no matter where you are in the world, you can access library services that you need to support your college classes. It is truly a remarkable system. In addition to that, we have helped Vermont, more Vermonters become nurses by starting at the Community College of Vermont and then completing their nursing program at Vermont Technical College. And just recently, we, CCV, has created a STEM studies program, which has become incredibly popular in just two semesters. And now there's a very easy pathway to Vermont Tech's bachelor's degree in renewable energy. So what we hope to do in Brattleboro is really to be able to use our co-location as a chance to really build on those partnerships. And we look forward to all of you working with us to help create some of those, those changes. And finally, for the history buffs in the, in the audience, I just want to let you know that we have been in four locations in downtown Brattleboro. We started in 1972 across the street in the Italian American building on the third or fourth floor. I can't remember which floor. Fourth floor. Then we moved to Green Street. Then we moved from Green Street to Landmark Hill. And now we're back in downtown. And again, it is truly wonderful to be in downtown. We look forward to being part of a vibrant and thriving downtown. And with that, I just want to thank you and thank you all for being here to celebrate with us. And I have one final announcement. I'm wondering if Tim Johnson for WTSA is here today and in the audience. Is Tim here? Is, well, today is Tim's birthday, and so if you happen to see him, wish him a happy birthday. Thanks. Dan Smith.
Vermontius is an interesting word. I'm, I, I'm, I'm humbled to have been asked to play a role at Vermont Technical College in this interim period. Um, we are very excited as an institution to be in the downtown area, um, 60 plus nursing students in and out of this building every day. Uh, faculty and staff are excited to be in the downtown. I do want to thank those folks for the amount of effort they put in uh, to the move. Uh, it is an incredible amount of work, and I'm very proud of our uh, faculty and staff for that effort. Um, <clears throat> we're a long way from uh, a roof that was open in the sky, uh, pigeon droppings everywhere, and bare nails. Uh, we're all uh, a little bit grayer, a little bit older. Uh, some of us are in new jobs, and some people involved have in, retired once or twice. <laughs> But it takes vision, as the governor described, it takes vision to see what a, a building like this can be. And when you have a big vision, a challenging vision, no one second guesses you if, you if you decide that it's too complex, too risky, or too expensive. You can walk away from a big vision if it looks too big and nobody will second guess you. Um, but what really separates this project and the guys behind it is that they had the big vision and they didn't let anybody talk them out of it. And in that way, I think it's a learning location, not just because of the educational institutions that are here. It's a learning location because of the effort that went into it, the work that was done, and the vision that they had, and the, uh, the ability to execute it. So I want to thank those guys for sticking to it. Because years from now, people will come into this downtown and they'll recognize this moment as a transformative one for Brattleboro, for Vermont Technical College, for the Community College of Vermont, uh, and the region. So we are incredibly proud to be here. We thank them for their work and their effort, and uh, we look forward to a bright and exciting future. Thank you. It's um, nice to see our congressman's feet on Vermont soil here. Um, <laughs> As I said, he's been in Washington dodging the, the um, political nightmares of Washington, looking out for our interest. And without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Peter Welch. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? You know how to get things done around here. Why don't you come on down to Washington? It's unbelievable. You know, over three years ago, five alarm fire, 60 folks had to be rescued. Everybody was. 23 fire departments came here. Everyone was proud of the response that uh, saved as much of the structure as we could. And really proud that nobody uh, was injured uh, really badly. But you know what? After the smoke uh, stopped and the dust settled, there was this incredible challenge. How do we rebuild Brooks House? It's the icon of downtown Brattleboro. And you know what? You did it. These folks here, you didn't know what you were getting into. <laughs> and you managed to get it done. Didn't hurt that you had a Southern Vermont boy as governor of, governor of Vermont. <laughs> had a little bit of help there. Peter, thank you for your incredible leadership on this. And I know it's because you love your community, but I also know it's because you have faith in the future of Vermont. And here it is. This is just a testament to the vitality of this incredible uh, town of Brattleboro and the extraordinary commitment and vision of people here to put one foot in front of the other and get something done. And you know, it is true. Washington, we're not getting it done. The leadership in a lot of ways in this country is coming from our communities, from our states, from our legislatures. And you know what, if that's where we've got to begin, let's get the beginning going. Congratulations to you for what you've accomplished in pulling together resources, working together, partnering with the state, partnering with our local institutions, uh, and making what is going to be an incredibly strong Brattleboro even stronger. My congratulations to you. We're all familiar with Bob Stevens because his fingerprints are on most of the projects that have been successful in this town. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Bob Stevens. Thank you, and whoa. 
welcome everybody to this. We're, I can't tell you how excited we are both to have so many familiar faces and sort of celebrate getting this building open. And, you know, I was, I was putting together comments, and I have to say, it's hard to come after this group of speakers. You know, it's, it really is uh, wonderful and really capturing the essence of what this has all been about. But, um, you know, three and a half years ago, we were standing in this building looking at knowing we had a challenge just to figure out how to do it. But also at the same time, knowing we had an opportunity to try to put this building back together in a way that was going to make the downtown better, to make this building better than it was. And I hope that as people walk around, as they see these spaces, as they visit our, our tenants and see the wonderful spaces in the college and duo, that they feel like it's better than it's ever been. Because that was the, that was the intent of getting into this, to help this downtown sort of come back better than it was ever been before. I have the... Um, uh, the challenge uh, to try to uh, create some sense, to give you all some sense of what it took to put this together, to let you know, to explain. And people come and they thank me, and I, I, what I really want to say is that it's not, it, I, there's no way I could have done this. There's hundreds and hundreds, literally, of people that have been behind that have made this happen. And I feel that I need to, and I'll try to go through this quickly, and I'm not going to catch everybody, but I need to give you some sense of what it took and who really was behind this to make this happen. I have to start with my partners. Um, you know, we, we started together uh, two and a half years ago. Um, I couldn't have asked for, you know, really a better group of people with intelligence, sort of problem solving, most of all, sort of the, the sense that we needed to do this right. We needed to keep in mind what was best for the community. And time and again, when something came up, uh, we found a way, uh, really, uh, to make this happen and bring it forward. So, you know, Craig, Ben, Drew, Pete, uh, never, never could have come together without really this, this sort of dream team for me.